uh, Councillor Coral Rakawa. Um, I have Kath Ash online. Everybody else is here. Would somebody like to so move the apology for Coral? Thank you, Councillor Carter, Councillor Lambert. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. We do have a public forum. Um, they don't appear to be there at the moment, but we'll fit it in when they turn up, if and when. Um, they're the two successful recipients of, from Rangatike College around um, being awarded the $1,000 trusts. So we'll move on that. I would remind people that we have had the council prayer this morning um, with another meeting, so normally we would have had it there. Um, a conflict of interest with Councillor Carter. To our PE bus lane. Thank you. Could that please be recorded? Any other conflicts of interest, you can raise them when the item agenda comes forward. Thank you. Um, by the way, if you put in an RFS in your name, even though it's for someone else, that could be regarded as a conflict of interest. Um, because you're the person requesting that something actually happens. Okay. Um, the confirmation of order of business. Can I ask staff whether there's anything that you wish to bring up as late item? Nothing at this stage. Thank you. Looking to move to item six, the confirmation of minutes, uh, starting, I think, uh, page three and running through to page five, running through to about page 20, looking for alterations, corrections. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, um, ends up on page 14 actually. So forget about page 18. <laughs> um, any alterations or corrections? If not, looking for somebody to so move. Councillor Duncan moving, Councillor Hero seconding. Those in favour? Those against, carried. I'll, I will keep an eye, have somebody keep an eye on you, Councillor Ash. Um, sometimes it's hard to pick it up. Thank you. Looking to move to item number seven, the follow-up actions from the previous meetings. Um, would somebody, first of all, that they be received? Councillor Carter moving. And... Councillor Gordon, I think for your name for a second. <laughs> Seconding. Those in favour? Those against? Carry. Um, do you want to take us through anything there? Okay, I'll just finish with this item first. Um, I suppose just um, again, happy to take questions if there's anything that you want an update on, but hopefully the status comments cover off what's happened with each action. I'll give you a second just to review this, guys. Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Just around um, the Winniata Marae Turning Bay. Um, I see it's closed. Uh, I assume that's because the request has been sent. Um, and now we just have to wait until we get some sort of reply and then it will be reopened. Yeah, I have, I have mentioned it at, at roading, but um, what I think might be useful also as far as the roading team, it wasn't attached as a request to that report and they tend to go off those reports as well. So if that could be done in the future as well, just to reinforce that. If, if I may, uh, Your Worship, this is an interesting one because it is on State Highway 1 and it's completely out of our jurisdiction. So all we could do, our only involvement in this is to pass on the request, yeah. which we've done, and that's what we've closed it. We have no further involvement. Um, can I just suggest it? Thank 
you, Anna. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's not, and you're dead right. All we can do there is. Um, Thanks, you, Councillor Dalgetty. Just a question about the Mokai Bridge there, in the reference to the building owner. I was just um, the, the bridge. Which page was that? Page twenty-four. The, the first entry, or the bottom entry. Um, mm -hmm. Do you wish to, there's a question? What does the building owner mean? In relation to this, I didn't understand. Do you wish, I believe, that's our bungee jumping facility. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Like my bridge, and there has been some correspondence with uh, Mr. Pointer about a group that were looking to to perhaps purchase or lease or do something with that. Uh, is my understanding. That's correct. Yeah. You you should have been building owner. Well, is, the building, is there a building there? Yes. Well, it would be a building matter because it sits on. The, on some reserve status from memory mm. so that reserve status would involve us <coughs> accepting the use under the reserves act of <coughs> yes. would that be fair yeah it's not a council building no, no. 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 no it's not thank you um there's also um we just I'll go and I'll go and talk on Charlie and Rachel. Oh, I was just going to ask about that. Please, Madam Councillor. Um, do you want to come? Somebody oh, wants to come and welcome them. Yeah. The question from who? Oh, Councillor Lambert. Lambert. I was just wondering how the uh, we're getting on with the costings for the disability access to the Hunnell Town Hall. It's just above the Mokai Bridge. Uh, I will follow up on that just to. You know, get a deadline on it, and we'll put a date to that. So okay. We can finish it off. Right. All right. Councillor Go, Councillor Gordon, and Councillor Duncan, Councillor Gordon. Uh, page twenty-one. The reference to the Taipei Heritage Group and the Grandstand Reef Community Fundraising. I wonder. I, I know this came from a, a motion, but I wonder should we be considering the wider park users group for key key groups within that um, there are some key users there that might be able to add some weight to any fundraising that goes on because the with all due respect to the heritage group i suspect that the other users use it far more just a suggestion is there an action that's required out of that uh, look look i'm just flagging it and if and if the action is that the communication goes broader, then I'm happy with that. Sure. Um, the, the issue here is that council are not doing the fundraising. And so um, we are very happy to support whomever for that fundraising. Um, and so we have a design and a cost and uh, a resolution by council as part of the long-term plan, but council are not doing the fundraising ourselves. So, if, if I may wish, um, does that mean that that group, the group that's been named, should they should be shoulder tapping any other groups to help them fundraise? Okay, thank you. Councillor Duncan. I have a question further to that, if I may. Mm -hmm. So, um, I understand that the Giblin group is involved in fundraising for us. That is, that's around the amenities bill. Yes, and that's been unsuccessful. Yes, that's right. But would they, would they be... In this case, you're saying council is not involved in the fundraising, so is the Giblin group a um, consideration the, for the... No, the Giblin group have effectively stand? changed their model. So, um, that so they're no longer available? No. They're, they're, they're not operating in the way they were. Um, I'll do some checking on that. I think, Peter, you and I both received advice around the changes in model. Yes. Um, I can't remember the absolute specifics of it. I can, can, we can, if you want, go back and check that. Yes, uh, if I recall that this, the amenities block was one of the last ones they were going to do. Can I ask, is this coming up at any, any later stage or shall I pursue this now? 
Uh, if you want to pursue it, now is the opportunity. So my understanding is that as part of that cost, we have spent $55,000 on, on the Giblin Group. Yep. And their funding application was unsuccessful for $100,000. And they are now long, no longer available. Would we have engaged with them knowing the changes that they were they were imminently facing? Probably not. Oh, thank you. I um, have, have a separate question, if I may. Thank you. Um, regarding the letter that's been drafted to Mr Thomas on page 22, um, it's the third, third one down, um, it was to be sent to them by the 13th of December. That's in progress. Is there any... any Thing further there. Um, what was that letter in reference to? Just um, it's to notify stock Mr. Yes, Mr. Ryan Thomas and Company of the outcome of their request for stock effluent disposal facilities. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I think the disingenuous staff <coughs> is able to assist me in any shape or form. So, a letter has been drafted um, for signing by the Chief Executive. I'm not sure if it's been sent. I've not signed it. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Councillor Carter. Um, re regarding the Bulls Community Committee with the um, scooter wrecks for Tamar P, um, what is the in progress there? As they have a design, they're you know, looking at getting made up. Um, I can start to liaise with the design or the costings. Thank you, Your, Your Worship. Uh, there are standard designs on, that you can buy off the shelf uh, that I definitely would suggest we do because it's all approved and built correctly. The only uh, outstanding issue is to um, get feedback from the roading team as to regulations as to where you can put it. I'm not sure what um, the determinations are around how close you can be to a vehicle crossing or to a hydrant or whatever it might be. We just need to figure out where this thing can go. Uh, and once we have figured that out, we'll get it installed. Could that just be an action coming back to you rather than all of council? Yes, yeah, so I thought back with the um, community committee. Yeah, we could do this off. Anything further from councillors before I move on? No, I'll then go back, please, to um, public forum. We have two outstanding uh, students. Now X, Rangatake College. Uh, how does that work? So Charlie, I'll ask you to come up, please, uh, and introduce yourself. Um, we thank you for both of you for coming along, but we'll give you first crack at it. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so my name's Charlie Sutton. Um, I'm 18 years old, just graduated from Rangatika College. Um, just thought I'd let you know like, what I plan on doing with the scholarship and just saying thank you. Um, so I'm writing this letter just to say a massive thank you for being chosen as one of the two recipients of the District Council Scholarship. Uh, in 2022, I'm planning on heading down to Plenum, uh, to NMIT, which is the Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technologies, to study in aeronautical engineering. Um, so that's a three year long course within a two year apprenticeship at the end of it. Um, that's going to get me into just working on Air New Zealand planes and stuff and just yeah, along the lines of basically a mechanic for planes is the easiest way to put it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to use a scholarship that I've uh, given to fund my tools for the year. It's a thousand dollars for each year just to keep up with your tools and maintenance and everything. So I'd like to use it for that. Um, it's going to help me out a lot um, regarding that. So yeah, just a massive thank you again. Um, I couldn't really do it without you guys. It's made it made everything a whole lot easier. So to everyone who made it possible, thank you a lot. Are you happy to take some questions? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just kick this one off. I've had the privilege of interviewing the pair of you, um, and it was a real privilege. You have pretty much a job secured at the end of your process to some extent, haven't you? Yeah, so um, throughout this whole year, I've been doing gateway over in fielding at um, Aero Support. They're like a yeah, just a little little branch that does some type of planes and builds some planes. I've been doing um, gateway there, and um, at the end of my gateway course, I shouted them lunch, and they actually said, um, well, at the end of your um, NMIT course, we actually would like to offer you a job. Yeah, so I've got that. So that's made it pretty cool. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 
Any further questions from council? I'd just, just like to say, don't don't downplay the um, uh, just a mechanic. Uh, yes. you know, I'm, I'm kind of confident to know that uh, you're more than just a mechanic on a plane. Thanks very much. So, yeah. hold, your, hold your head up high on that one. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank, and thank you for taking the time coming along and thank us. It, it's fantastic. When we see young people like the two of you achieving things, um, that uh, gives us a whole new insight back into our community. So, congratulations. Thank you. Rachel, hard act to follow, eh? Yeah. Um, good afternoon, I'm Rachel. I'm 17 years old and I just completed my five years at Rangitake College. So I've written a letter to thank you guys for uh, awarding me this scholarship. So good afternoon, my name is Rachel Rowe. I am writing this letter to express how thankful I am to be chosen as one of the two recipients of the Rangitake District Council Scholarship. From year 11, I had always kept my options open for what I wanted my career path to look like in the future. This ranged from becoming a makeup artist, pursuing a Bachelor of Communications degree, also known as a business degree, and even nursing. I was undecided on what I wanted to study until my mum came home one day after she was shopping at Farmers and she was telling me about how the Farmers attendant was telling her what a Bachelor of Communications degree was. From there, I knew this degree is what I wanted to study. The event management career that this communications degree opens up for me incorporates my strategic and creative thinking style that I love to portray in my passion for dance and is something that I think I will be able to use well in everyday life. I applied to Victoria University of Wellington in late October where I had decided I wanted to take this course. In early November, I received an email back from the university saying that I had been accepted. It was an amazing feeling knowing that I could achieve something I never thought was possible for me. The realisation hit when I knew for the next three years I would be living in a city I love with family I love. I am planning to leave February where I will be moving to Wellington to stay with my sister and her husband and with my niece and nephew. During this time before my course starts I will be finding a job that can help me fund with my stay. I would again like to say a huge thank you to everyone for rewarding me with this scholarship. I am very grateful that I was able to be one of the two recipients and I cannot stress enough how thankful I am to gain help from some amazing people. And don't worry, the scholarship definitely won't go to place. Thank you. <laughs> Same congratulations are in order to you. Um, I think outstanding. Um, by the way, councillors, when we go through this interview process, that I am assisted in the decision making with usually the principal of the school. Um, the, it was um, some pretty tough decisions in the case of Rangitake College. Any questions from councillors? Thank you. Look, the two of you are more than welcome to stay and learn the intricacies <laughs> of local government. Would I advise it? Probably not. <laughs> Uh, um, congratulations, you go toward the education of our absolute best wishes. Um, from our point of view as a community, this is money incredibly well spent. Um, congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. By the way, councillors, for your information, uh, um, we offer four scholarships. We offer two scholarships. $1,000 to Rangitike College. We offer two scholarships to Tai Happy Area School. I took on board the comments that councillors made to say that they wanted a more formal approach than was previously in existence with, with um, Tai Happy Area School. In the past, they've literally just said, send us two cheques for $1,000 um, without an interview process. And so um, that has been corrected. Um, and we had two recipients, uh, Paparangi, who's the head girl of Tai Happy Area School, and uh, Atafai, who is also sitting on our youth council. So I'm hoping at some stage they also get the chance to appear in front of council. Thank you very much. Any, any comments, questions around that process? Um, 
um, take it, we've concluded seven, moving to item eight, the Mayor's report. Um, Tai Happy Town Town Hall office space. Um, you know, absolutely, the, the, the Chief Executive's decision made uh, in terms of safety of community, safety of staff. I totally support it. I see there is a um, a request that is being tabled from uh, Tai Happy Community Board, um, and we will deal with that. We won't. Be able to deal with it in terms of a decision making process, but it's more advice um, to councillors and council staff as, as to the need for a further report. Is that how you see it, Chief Executive? It wasn't here last night, Your Worship, so I don't know at what point this is going to be tabled. Okay. Um, I think we'll table it as a late item um, and, and deal with it as such. That's the appropriate place for it to be, I think. Any questions around my group report uh, or engagements? Councillor Lambert, that's not. Yes, I missed the uh, Mayor for a Day interview on News Talk ZB, Your Worship. Did that go quite well? Um, I've got a News Talk ZB interview in about four days' time. Oh, so oh to attend, oh, sorry. Yeah. So it's two or ten. Oh. Good thing I didn't say it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're, uh, okay, so we just, if we listen on the day, we should. Yeah. Um, I think I've had a little, I don't think it's an attempt to sort of um, catch us out as council. It's a chance to say um, where our district is at. Um, that we're moving forward rapidly with uh, all sorts of exciting interest in terms of growth, etc. Those sorts of things. <coughs> and to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Councillor Ash. Yeah, thanks. Um, just wondering if you can, if, if there's any updates on the um, Accelerate 25 that you attended, if there's anything that would be illuminating for us all? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, uh, Councillor. So, um, certainly with an Accelerate 25, there was a fair chunk of Accelerate 25 is now focused on our district. Um, we now have, we're on our district as a standing item and um, the senior um, MB staff in New Zealand are very acutely aware of what we're doing, obviously. But now um, the, wide, the wider group is certainly aware. Um, there was a lot of talk around um, uh, where to from here, what processes you're in, involved in. We still keep some of the the confidentiality in terms of names of, of some individual companies. So, for instance, you know, you might have a company referred to as a food producer rather than by name. Just warning you by doing that that you don't go mentioning names. But, um, does that, I guess, but it is a really good understanding of where other districts are at so we have I had the mayor of Tarua now as an official member of Accelerate 25. Um, I argued some time ago that we needed to relook at who was on this group, and the probably the need for a rural voice on this group. And there had been a process that Accelerate 25 had dropped into a point industry people without going back to the foundation members being the councils. So um, that was a lot of that was probably COVID as well with changeovers. But what we did find was that the mayors that were not members were invited to the table and able to provide feedback and input into it. <coughs> much, much better system and meeting in my view. Does that deal with that? 
Thank you, Councillor. Anything else? Oh, I'll also move that my report be received. Looking for a second or two. Councillor Belsham, those in favour? Those against, carried. Thank you. Move to item number nine, the Chief Executive's report. I'll pass over to Peter, but while I'm doing that, can somebody move the reception? Thank you, Councillor. Here are Councillor Gordon, those in favour? Those against, carried. Thank you. Peter, do you want to take us through this, please? The, I'll take it as read your worship other than point six. Um, so I'll pause to see if there are any questions other than point six before I move to the recommendation. Well, good. The slow guy a chance to catch so that up. That includes the health and safety report. Are there any questions on the, opinion, on the attachment for health and safety? No, okay, we'll go to item six. Um, this is where you need some some names, don't you? Yes, just to to, to, uh, to expedite the process. Um, I have an interest <coughs> in this space. Um, who do, who else does? We're talking about the R, RMA submissions. Your Worship, what skill sets are required? Give um, us a bit of a guide. I don't think you need a full understanding of the Act. What I would suggest you do is read the speed dating version of, of the Act. So you can Google um, RMA reform, and there are all sorts of different levels in that. I think that what we would be looking for is people with an interest in having, for instance, a local voice on these processes. You know, uh, how do you see it being run? what sorts of level of things would go to a regional voice, those sorts of things. But I don't think you need an in-depth knowledge. Um, oh, I, should have, I don't know if anybody's got an absolute in-depth knowledge of the Act, to be honest. Maybe a handful of lawyers in the country. Anybody interested? Yes, the submission process we shall not have that. That's great because you're chair of policy, which is um, totally appropriate. So, would, in the light of nobody else, would somebody like to move that, that um, His Worship the Mayor and Councillor Gordon be delegated to review and sign up? <coughs> a lot of the stuff will be coming also from staff. It's not us. Worship, I'll, I'll, I'll step into that into that fray to get a greater, greater understanding. Thank you. We move that those three elected members be um, selected. Looking for a second or two, Councillor Duncan seconding. Any discussion? Put it to the vote. Uh, it's become part of your I will put that as a separate motion tonight. Could you do that? Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, it is there as a second yes. recommendation. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. My apologies. Right, we box on. Please report. Yes, thank you. Anything else that you want to talk about? No. Moving straight on. So let's embrace it. Moving on to item ten. This is now we're into reports for decision. So the local Easter Sunday trading policy, page through to 33. Um, who would like to take us through that? Um, that would be George, your worship. Uh, I see him outside, so we're just going to get him in the room, I think. Am I allowed to? Yes, because Jess will have to. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Jess. <coughs> so this, this is the adoption process from something that has gone through policy and planning. George, um, do you wish to um, speak on the local Easter Sunday trading policy as it currently stands? Uh, I'll take the report as read and just um, highlight, as you have yourself, um, Your Worship, that it's been through the full consultation uh, process. We received the two submissions that were both in support of the retention. Um, there were no proposed changes at any point uh, with this policy, so um, it would continue that um, <clears throat> local Easter Sunday trading could continue throughout the district without any amendments to it, that is. Councillor Duncan. Yes, I have a question around this because on page 38, 
It's one of the submissions is from a chap who lives in New South Wales. And I'm wondering, do we take them? It, this is an international survey. It's Anybody can submit. Really? And uh, I love the submission about disappointment of rabbits. <laughs> yeah, this is potentially one of the anomalies with RMA type processes because essentially then it's up to the, the decision makers whether they view a submission from outside of the district as carrying the same weight as a submission from within the district. Is that right? So they have the capacity to do that, to weight it? Yes. As decision makers, yes. the, the decision makers could say between argument A and argument B um, that they would tend to the expression would be favour the evidence of or something like that. Right, any further comments? Otherwise I move first of all the recommendation that it be received. Councillor Hero moving, Councillor Dalgetty seconding those in favour. Those against carried. Thank you. Recommendation two um, that the submissions be received. I think Councillor Belsham moving, seconded Councillor Gordon. Those in favour? Those against. The next one is the and or, or with amendment or without amendment. Councillor Gordon moving? Yeah, happy to move without amendment. Looking for a second or two, Councillor Duncan. Any questions? Do you wish to speak to it? Oh, just, yes, I will, Your Worship. I, I think if uh, councillors go to page 34 and look at the conclusion, I think that's a really good summary uh, with the key part that's saying that it supports local businesses, oh, sorry, it will enable businesses who can't under the Act to open and trade. That's the key part. There's a whole chunk that can, as a right. Um, and this basically picks up um, the ones that are left out. So, and there are checks and balances in the in the bylaw and in the Act. So, I think it's quite safe. So. Okay. Next speaker, Councillor Ash. Councillor. Yeah, um, I was surprised to see that we didn't receive uh, more submissions to this, and maybe other people don't feel quite as impassioned about this as as I do. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, Easter trading. I love the idea of shops being able to operate, but I also love the strength of social fabric as well. And I think things like um, Easter trading just undermines that. So I, I'm surprised to see the lack of submissions also from our businesses saying, yes, they wanted to be open um, and, and to be able to trade for the for the Sunday or not. But um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Just thought I'd make that comment wondering whether or not they had enough time to respond or I'm not sure councillor whether I take that as as in favour of or against um you um we'll see if we get near the numbers of three four or three against do the speakers to the motion right and reply put it to the vote those in favour aye, aye. Those against? Motion is carried, thank you. And we now move on to 10.2, the project manager management office report. And Jess. we welcome Jess to the table. While Jess is getting organized, could somebody move the receipt, please? Councillor um, Wilson moving, Councillor Carter seconding those in favor. Aye. Those against? Carried, thank you very much. All with you, um, Jess. Thank you. Are there any questions on the Mangaluka Bridge report? Thank you. Are there any questions on the Martin to Bowles Wastewater Centralisation Project? Um, Forecast, task forecast this month revised construction program to be confirmed. When I saw that, I couldn't actually see where 
Blue Vision actually is. What's what was booked up? Our contractor, Fulton Hogan, is waiting on the delivery of materials, which has been held up, and at this time we don't know that it will have any delay on the overall program, okay. but we are waiting for them to come back with a, when they know the delivery date and overall advice program. Okay, thank you for that. If you head down Wellington Road towards Bulls, you'll see the signs have gone up, now time the start of construction, which is an exciting milestone. I think I read somewhere there was going to be a sod turning in one of these projects. What, when's that? Which project? It is this project, but we are still waiting on a confirmed date that we can start digging the ground. We don't have that yet. I think we need at least a 60 tonne digger. <laughs> at least. At least. <laughs> Councillor Corden. Firstly, may I ask, is that because you don't have one in your workshop currently, your workshop? <laughs> Uh, or frivolity aside, um, fourth paragraph um, where it says, with respect to council concerns about the viability of two farms, etc., we've requested an, irrig an indicative irrigation design to enable us to approach landowners. M my question is, in projects of the sort, do we not start with an, an indicative design or a peer review of our own processes to give us guidance? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, the, it, it just may be the way that this paragraph is worded. It almost makes it look as if we didn't have an indicative design. Mm. Am I wrong or right on that assumption? Yeah. <clears throat> which, can you just mm. check? So, um, which paragraph are we talking it's about? The, page? Oh, it's the second to last above the block on page forty-two. Yeah. Right. It's a three-liner. And it refers to the two farms decision in the last council meeting. And then it says, we've requested an, an indicative irrigation design to enable us to approach owners with suitable land. Yep. If I may, Your Worship, uh, how that works is the, the final irrigation plan depends on the land that we get and what it will allow and not allow. So from what I can get from the experts, it's slightly different every time. Uh, it could be a mixture of things, could be one thing, could be something quite different. Okay. Uh, and it depends on the land and the neighbours and a whole lot of other things. So I think what that means is specific to those two pieces of land, uh, which now is in the past really. So, something yeah. okay. So that really means that your your designers almost draw up a matrix that says if you've got really bad land, you need this, and if you've got really good land, you need that, and there's a sort of a range of options within. No, that is incorrect. So if you think of the Ratna example where we bought the land there, we then get the consultants to look at the land and the condition of the land and the neighbours and the prevailing wind and all the other factors and then propose to us what is the best irrigation system for that piece of land. Uh, it'll be the similar for any other piece of land that we would purchase. I think um, the, the spirit of this, <coughs> if it's not worded, uh, accurately is that instead of being passive and waiting for something to come onto the market, mm -hmm. we are looking at going to landowners with a, um, this is a the parcel of land that we wish to buy from you. Um, and that, look what I have on the right, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so, so this is a, a proactive approach. And, um, and so this is saying, okay, well, if we were to buy land, this is the kind of stuff we will need. Mm -hmm. It's great, it's bringing together the two items, you know, where is land suitable and what would the irrigation look like to that land. Um, we don't want to fall into a trap of approaching someone about a parcel of land, then finding the irrigation will cost $10 million. Um, it is trying to bring those things together, having an indicative irrigation design as well as identifying suitable areas that land would work for that irrigation. Thank you. And so my the concept of having a matrix actually does follow because you will have different types of soil and drainage, etc. So you may end up with different kit applying. Thank you. Question answer. Thank you. Um, we'll push on. Any further questions with regard to that item? 
Otherwise, we're into light white food. Any questions on light white food and vitamin? Uh, push on. Any questions on Tamadapi, the community centre, and the bus lane in Town Square? Mm, and we will note that uh, Councillor Carter has um, a conflict of interest with regard to this item declared. Councillor Dalgetty. Uh, I'm just interested in the comment under risk. There is a risk that the landowner of the green space may not let us complete the ground square work. Um, can you? Elaborate on that for me, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were advised by the own landowner of the green space that they wish to do something that we perceive different to what we thought they were going to use the land space for. That's Can I just question whether this should be an open meeting or whether it should mm -hmm. be. Um, if there is a commercial interest um, or sensitive, anything sensitive in nature that you want to just, I'm not sure there is, but I'm just questioning before you go further. Um, I don't believe that certainly what I've said would, would fit that category. Yeah, and what sorry. I'm about to say is that it's now been resolved. So, um, uh, so, so um, let's, let's, yeah, thank you. certainly verbally resolved by a phone call this week, and um, I'm not sure if that's been caught up yet with, um, to, in writing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Taipei Memorial Park Development community buildings um, and this is um, an item that will come up in public excluded councillors but is there anything that you have absolutely the right to raise questions against it in the public space here councillor gordon it's a general big picture question um, but we can apply it to this item when we go into a construction project do we have processes in place that would rule in or rule out certain material choices? And who flags those? <coughs> perhaps perhaps if, if, I, if we shift out of the happy space, if we would build a shed down at Scotts Ferry and that we know that there's lots of salt wind there, would that raise flags that said, hmm, these materials are out because of corrosion or premature decay and these materials might be in? Or if we go to Tai Happy, you know, are there other things in the environment that we that we flag in or flag out material choices? We allow for that in the scope when we procure our design consultants. So we need to be um, one step back and <coughs> set the scope for the consultants to design to, yes. so that if the situation ever arose, we could hold them liable under the professional indemnity within the contract. So we don't specify a material, but we do state that um, the facility must be suitable for the environment. We state what we know about Tai Hapi, and there's also clauses around them doing their own due diligence. Um, so we steer away from specifying materials or excluding materials, um, and instead put the onus onto the people best placed to wear that risk. Supplementary domain, yeah, it's big picture. Do we, do we ever peer review them? To what Jess was saying, as part of the building consent process, uh, there are all kinds of standards that we that they have to comply with. So there's all kinds of different zones with different design standards and different materials that can that can be used. So it'll be salt spray, wind loads, uh, snow, uh, liquefaction, all kinds of things. And when when they apply for the building consent, it's checked against all those all those design standards. So. Thank you. Carry on. Okay. okay so. I, I, I guess the, the thing that I'm really digging down into is we get to the applying for building consent stage, and by then we've gone through an awful lot of design and potentially an awful lot of specification, and then we get to that stage and the building consent team may say, ha, 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 hang on a minute. Do we have, do we have a short circuit in that loop where, where someone looks in at the early stage and says, oh, actually, guys, you know, we've got an issue here. In, in that whole project management. And it's a, it's a general big picture question. I, I guess, would it be fair to say that when you, when 
a council decides to build something, there are several stages in this. For councillors can first of all voice an opinion as to, as to what they want in terms of delivery from the structure. The next stage is you move inevitably to a, a concept design before final QV um, type evaluation. I'm really Where again the community would normally get um, the ability to you know say this is in front of community so you could get design change material change i'm really perhaps perhaps i'm raising this issue of checks and balances in the wrong setting but i'm using this as an example i could have used anything so we have sufficient checks and balances in there that we don't get too far down any track without people with the right oversight saying we shouldn't go there or we should if I may, Your Worship, uh, we have to remember the people that we employ to do the designs are experts in the field uh, and generally knows the rules and the regulation standards better than anybody else. So the chances of them getting it wrong is very slim. And then it's exactly what Jess is saying. It falls under their professional identity. We employ them because they are the experts. If they get it wrong, the time is for their cost. What you then have on the back end of that is the consent process where all that's checked as a, as a last check before you move on to build it. So in the mix of those things, uh, for something to slip through is very slim. Thank you. That's fine. I, I guess I'm see different levels in this council. For instance, the very bottom end, you know, a fit out, councillors may say, we would like you to think of including a wall as carpet material. At the other extreme, if you're in a forestry area, you know, could councillors say, you know, could some sort of um, initiative be given to you know, timber rather than steel? Um, Councillor Dalgetty. Thank you for your report. Just um, for my own clarity, in my own head, um, is there an expectation there will be some local Tahipi fundraising towards this project? To For the amenities building yes. or the grandstand? No, to the amenities build. All that we'd anticipated doing for the amenities building was to apply for funding through the Giblin Group which we were unsuccessful for. And we will delve into that more in the public exploded part. Sure. I guess, councillors, you're going down the path of Princeton's Bulls community raised a lot of money. Yeah, so I sort of, to be honest, had thought that we that was there, but I haven't gone back and checked whether we are high, made that up in my mind. That's a legitimate question. And um, just Councillor Ash, if you're still online, uh, so you're online, sometimes your video is off. Can you just make sure that if you do leave the meeting that we, uh, that's noted whether or not it's on a chat function, um, that we know that, that you have left the meeting in much the same way that anybody who leaves, leaves chambers is noted there in terms of um, you know, the meeting process. I, th I think sometimes you turn off so that you can just stretch. Yeah, I'll certainly let you know if I'm leaving the meeting. I have no intention to. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on. Next one. Are there any questions on the Martin Industrial Park and Rail Hub? Are you sorry, um, the risk here, the program is slipping again. Um, is that a controlled slip or is it just, you know, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. It's entirely outside of the control of the project team. Uh, the environment court process is extending and extending. And we're now looking like we're moving to a series of hearings, which we don't have dates for. So unfortunately it's slipping again in an uncontrolled manner. Thank you. We'll go on to item seven, the Martin Water Strategy, the sub-project, the new bore.
just one question from me, um, Mr. Benedict. The target volume for the bore, our current capacity is sort of around the 5,000 cubes, isn't it? That's the current sort of usage. You wish from the dams, it is substantially less than that. It's about three and a half at the moment. Um, and then the Tutanui bore by itself is also about three and a half. Yeah, so this gives us plenty of room for expected uh, residential industrial type growth that we need. Thank you. That's the point I was just getting to. Thank you. Any other questions? If I may add a comment, it wasn't in time to get into this report, uh, but I met with representatives from Ngā Wairi Ki Ngā Tiapa on Tuesday this week um, and they've given um, significant support and principle for this project. I would love to see this happen. I thought somebody would point out to me that the Mayor made a comment in the last report asking whether consideration would be given now to pumping water up to the dams. Obviously somebody much higher than anybody <laughs> on earth has listened to that and uh, fulfilled that action. Thank you very much. Um, next one, the regional treatment consenting program, as read. Thank you. Um, comments around the miscellaneous ones, um, the Memorial Hall, Martin Civic Centre, um, gym, etc. Any questions around that? Any? If I could make a comment on the Martin Civic Centre for you. Uh, the project management office has identified, given what's occurred in Taihape in the last couple of weeks, that there is added value that could be had from utilising the work that's already been done for Martin Civic Centre and the contracts that have already been procured to replicate that work in Taihape, being the business case and concept design. It's discussions that have been had this week, and we're likely to come back uh, with recommendations in January. Um, however, we are likely to come back with a proposal that we use the same teams we've gone out to the open market to procure to begin the process for Tai Happy. Yeah, that may well tie into a, a late item. So um, that's certainly an, an issue that I'm sure Council will be interested in discussion. Anything further from councillors? Councillor Gordon, Councillor Duncan, Councillor Gordon. Um, page 55, the last item, Taipei Water Treatment Plant, and there's a comment in there about a desktop assessment regarding groundwater has an alternative supply. Anything you'd like to add? Is that a positive or a negative? I'll put my hand up and say that we have received those and have not yet reviewed and analysed them. Thank you. So Duncan. Uh, my question is for um, Ms. McElroy be um, available for that discussion later on at that later item? Yes. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. I believe that takes us through to the next item 10.3, the correction of the road boundary error uh, includes um, some table documents. Who's going to take us through that? I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you for that. So this is um, something that happens quite often, uh, where the actual road is not where it's shown on uh, on the GIS and on the land itself. And with um, with Graham Point, and uh, we go through these as they come up, and we want to rectify them. Uh, in most of these cases, it is a, it's a, a zero balance to us. It is just a legal procedure to make the, the road on the GIS line up with the actual road on the on the um, Due to our, um, our policies, it has to go past the council for approval when it has to be with land. So these two roads, the first one, Pungatara Road, uh, that's um, just the top end of Spooners Hill heading out towards um, Pukekahe, isn't it? And the second one, I'm not 100% sure, but isn't that the very top end of the, of the, 
district um, as you come in past Urangi. That's that road, it's isn't the, it? It's Rangwai Junction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. So just in case anybody, I was reasonably sure on the first, um, less sure on the second. Questions around this? Uh, uh, so just moving the receipt off. Second the receipt. Happy to move the receipt. Second point, Councillor Gordon, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Recommendation two. Happy to move. Councillor Wilson, Chair of Assets, seconded. Councillor Gordon, discussion, do you wish to speak to it? No. Put it to the vote. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried. There's a third recommendation. Um, and that the council acknowledge no adjustment for value of the exchange land will be made and council will meet, meet all of its costs without contribution from the joining landowners. Yep, Effectively, move. this is a trade-off, isn't it, a little bit in terms of land. Happy to move. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Gordon, seconding. Sorry, Councillor Lambert. Do you wish to speak to it? Uh, just one, one uh, point of clarification to make around all of the uh, um, above recommendations which have been moved. Uh, clear consultation and steps have been, uh, with all parties concerned, have been engaged in. I would have assumed so, just looking to clarify that that has, in fact, taken place with the necessary landowners. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is a quite common occurrence, councillors, um, when the Tai Happy Napier Road, for instance, was brought up to scratch, well, not to scratch, but um, there was a lot of this that went on. Item number 10.4, the Hautapu River Pedestrian Bridge. Um, Mr. Benedict, you wish to take us through this? Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, this is a, an interesting request from the Friends of Taipei Society. Uh, as you may know, it's a group of volunteers that's done some amazing work up there uh, on that park, changing it into uh, a community amenities area. The next step for them is to um, construct a pedestrian bridge over the Hatapu stream or the Hatapu River so they can, pedestrians or people can move around. Um, what's happened though in the, in the conversations with the contractor, um, they realized that it would be better if the contract is managed through council. We have the expertise and the experience how to do this, um, rather than the Friends of Taipei Society. Uh, we would really appreciate it if we could help them uh, because they've been doing such great work there. What we have to do though, because they manage the procurement of the contractor, we will just manage the contract. But in our procurement policy, it's very clear that we uh, still have to abide by the rules. So what we're asking for today is for you to allow us to, um, to vary from those rules to be able to help uh, this organization to construct uh, this bridge. The total of value of the bridge will be somewhere between 50 and $75,000. This is coming out of the funding. Package. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No cost to us. Would somebody like to move the receipt, please? Councillor Duncan moving, Councillor Hero seconding. Oh, sorry, Councillor Ash just about to um, put it to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Councillor Ash, would you be happy to move the second recommendation? Thank you. Moving recommendation two. Um, this is about the waiver of process in effect. Um, they are the, um, there's been a lot of state work to get to this stage. I'll support it. Um, looking for a second or two there. <coughs> Councillor Carter seconding any discussion or questions, Councillor Wilson? Uh, yeah, speaking to and, and speaking in favour, but just seeking clarity uh, around the uh, the shifting of the process that we are not in any such way uh, taking on any liability for a project that may have started, or we are ensuring also that the um, the health and safety protocols around it are still being met within that because otherwise it hasn't gone through our normal procurement process with regards to attributes of the contractor that's already engaged it's been engaged by an outside contractor have we clarified the ability of that contract and does that contractor meet within our uh, within our scope and requirements for being in effectively what is our land have we clarified that yes uh, this is one of the benefits of this contract being run through us so we know which questions to ask and to be sure that all the right things are in place 
the contractor though that they've chosen uh they do a lot of this work all over the country and uh, they are very reputable so okay i'm very comfortable that they're actually very good contractors thank you but like i said that's one of the benefits of using us thank you and councillor belsham just a question so the input from rdc is all internal staff uh, and putting there's no external contract or project management it's all internally and can we have the resources available uh, so we're not demand, putting extra demands on our current resources I'll answer that. Um, the answer is yes it does place an additional demand um, are they available no um, but this is the right thing to do and we will adjust our schedules for other projects accordingly okay. I'd just like to speak uh, for this. Um, I understand um, having spoken to uh, one of the members of uh, Friends of Tai Happy Group um, that that this um, their designer is someone who does this regularly for DOC. In fact, has built more than put 200 um, bridges previously, and he highly recommends um, this edifice structures who would take on the building of the bridge and says they have high quality of work, so I have great confidence in this. Thank you. We've had three speakers for. Are there any speakers against? Okay, so write a reply required, Councillor Ash. No, I'm not sure I gave you speaking rights. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried. My apologies, Council. Um, recommendation three, and whoever moves this will get speaking rights. That the Council authorise the CEO to enter the, into the contract. Looking for a mover, Councillor Belsham. Councillor Ash seconding. Um, questions? Otherwise, do you speak to it? Oh, look, other than just to take on board the CEO's comments that this is the right thing to do to ensure that this group and the work that they're doing um, proceeds in the right manner. Councillor Ash, do you want to speak to that? No, I think it's all covered and we all know that we just want to see this work done and um, yeah, this is the right way to go about it. Thank you. Any other speakers? Uh, she was supporting, so I don't think you need to write a reply. I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? No. Those against? Motion is carried. Thank you. We move then into the next item around reports for information. That's very quickly dealt with because there are none and no discussion items. We now move on to item 13, the minutes from committees on page 66. And would somebody move the recommendation that that block of minutes? Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Delgetti. Those in favour? Right. Those against? Carry. Um, and did we have a recommendation from those committees? Um, yes, we did. But we haven't um, probably need to deal with that as the late item. Right. So we're going to page eighty eighty seven. I'm happy to move that uh, recommendation that council approves. The below recommendation from finance and performance. Yeah, just for staff's point of view, um, one of the difficulties that everybody expresses with the big tin can is that yes, you have a line that you can move to page numbers, but you can't just type in the page number required. So we now move page. This is the recommendation that council approves or does not approve record finance performance that the finance and performance committee recommend to council the carrying over and you wishing to move councillor Belsham? Yeah, that second the councillor Wilson, do you wish to speak to it? 
Any speakers to it? Those in favour? Those against? Carried. And the recommendation from the Ratana Community Board. That, that counts in noting the recommendation from the Rath Community Board names the right of way associated serving six lots on Rangatahi Road as Maihana Place. Um, and would somebody like to so move? Councillor Panapa, do you wish to move? Councillor Hiro, you wish to second that? Um, Councillor Panapa, do you wish to speak? Speakers to or for or against? I'll put it straight to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carry. Um, yes, we could go straight to the late item and you've drafted something. Um, Right, so there's uh, two or three recommendations there. Can we just scroll a little bit, please, for me? Thank you. The first recommendation, one, that the late item be dealt with as part of the agenda for the council meeting of December 21. It's preferable that the item is not delayed into a subsequent meeting as the council is beginning discussions on the earthquake risks with the Thai Happy Town Hall. Um, this is the reason that... so. This is giving an argument around urgency. So if we accept it as a late item under urgency, my view is then you have the ability to make a decision with regard to this. Does everybody understand that ruling and the reasons for it? Would somebody like to move recommendation one? Councillor Gordon, Councillor Hero seconding. Councillor Gordon, do you wish to speak to this? Uh, no, I think it's quite self-explanatory. So this is just the reason for allowing discussion, etc. This came up, well, I'll explain. This came up at the community board meeting last night. They wanted this issue brought to the table. They felt that it was important to at least get it onto the table. Right. So here we have the, the Thai Happy Community Board endorses the names of, etc. Um, bang. Does somebody want to move and speak to this councillor Hero? Thank you. You wish to move? Yes. A seconded by Councillor Duncan. Do you wish to speak to it? Well, just to say that at last night's um, community board meeting, um, the two options that came up, we thought that this was um, the best option given that the, the names of those rivers um, denote our place. Is the, the other option was um, around the Rako, around the trees, which could be that are native trees throughout the country, whereas these names are specifically to, this, to our district. Uh, hence the reason that the, count, uh, the community board decided to go with that. Okay. <coughs> Any discussion? Otherwise, I'll put it straight to a vote. Councillors, put it to a vote. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Recommendation three. Um, Sorry, mm. just before you do this one, Certainly. this has not come past staff yet, so I can't, uh, if you're asked if you resolve this, I can't necessarily guarantee I can do that without there being some um, consequence that I'm not aware of yet, so there may be a consequence. Would you be happy if the person moving it approves or does not approve in principle? Yes. Um, so there's nobody moving this at the moment, but I would suggest that you put in principle in, in there, which gives an ability if there is an issue. Would somebody like to move that the council approves in principle? Um, like somebody, Councillor Hira, are you prepared to move? Looking for a second to two. Councillor Duncan, I thought it might be you. Yeah. You wish to speak to it? Uh, just to say that, uh, um, it, again, at the meeting last night, uh, potentially they've got the paint. Potentially the, it was paint that was purchased a number of years ago, I understand. Uh, 
for what this is and um, what they're talking about in here. So uh, hopefully when the discussion happens with staff, or the inputs will be, uh, when you get back in touch with the community board chair, uh, she'll be able to. And we presume that, I, that um, paints age as well, like fine wines and storage. Yeah. Councillor Gordon, Councillor Dalgetty, Councillor Gordon. Comment, um, comment that came from staff that were present in the meeting last night indicated that this blue whale colour is actually part of the scheme. It's not something from left field that's actually in the colour scheme that's there. So yeah, it was really to say, hey, we've got some paint. Yeah, I know. I'll take that as speaking for the motion. That is speaking for. Councillor Dalgetty. Yeah, I just was trying to understand what the significance of that blue whale colour is. They're not rugby club colours, are they? No, they're not. Can I answer that, Your Worship? Certainly. So there are quite specific colours that belong to Taihepi, and they're off the river and the Papa Cliffs, and the other one is another is the sky, I think, being Rangi. Um, and those those colours are used throughout throughout Taihepi with the grandstand, the town clock, and the town hall specifically at the moment. And blue whale is the blue colour. And the other reason why this has been requested is because at the moment, the bottom of the town clock is painted in the Papa colour, which is a, off sort of a deep cream, and it's not very practical. Whereas the darker blue on the bottom would mean that there wasn't the, the dirty look that happens over a few years. And so that's why the community board suggested that it should be painted that colour. Thank you. We'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Quickly carried. Recommendation four. Your Worship, before we go on, have you put recommendation number one? I thought I did. Sorry, uh, oh. I must have missed it. All right. Yeah. Somebody move. Could, sorry, could we just vote on recommendation one to check? Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you for picking it up. Could we just scroll, please, slightly on my screen? Thank you. Um, the last one, the recommendation four, that council approves or does not approve the below recommendations of Taipei Community Board. That Taipei Community Board, in considering the recent closure of the Taipei Town Hall slash Civic Centre building, asks that council one, moves with urgency to progress a solution for the building, and two, reconsiders the prioritisation of the Thai Happy Town Hall Civic Centre Capital Expenditure Project within the 21-31 long-term plan programme. And just before somebody puts this on the floor, um, my view of this um, may well be that that um, this can, can be a parallel type process. So there's bodies of work that could well be accommodated for, for both um, in terms of the, uh, the development of uh, the business plan, etc., and those sorts of things. And Martin would presumably uh, continue. Um, there will be questions around, you know, Know, how that all fits in, what rights we have within the LTP, etc. But essentially the way I view this is this is asking effectively staff to begin a process around understanding what would be required. I'll move first to the Chief Executive um, if he wants to give us any advice around this. Um. Uh, no, I would say. Okay. So it's a legitimate, it comes out, and we don't have the option of, of changing this recommendation as it currently stands from the community board. You could put another recommendation on the table. Would somebody like to move recommendation four as it stands or a variation of? I'd like to move that at this point in time. Based on the wording as it is there, we cannot change that wording because that has come from the community point of view noted. 
I would like to move that we do not approve it based on that wording that's up there at the moment. Are you wanting to foreshadow anything as an alternative? Um, not without giving some, some serious thought to that, Your Worship, because the wording needs to be getting this large body of work involved in that, and I understand the sentiments of, of the motion and the recommendation, but as it's worded up there, I do not believe we can accept that. Well, you move, you're, to your right to move the motion, I'll uh, be looking for a seconder to your motion. Is there a seconder to the motion to say you uh, do not approve the recommendation? Councillor Dalgetty, you're seconding? Yeah. Um, you're right to speak to your motion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Worship. Yes, I'll, I absolutely 100% agree where it is. And I'd, seeing as we're only just seeing this recommendation now, and as it has come into late life, I mean, I fully respect that it has come from uh, one of our partner organisations in the, in the community board in, in um, Taihebi. So it's, it's, in the, it's in the right sphere, there's no doubt about that. But without, um, I'm just trying to think about how we could actually reword this in such a way that it would give it the same emphasis of which the board is, um, is, is looking to achieve. The way it's worded at the moment, I'm just not happy with it. So um, I would welcome a uh, foreshadowed motion from somebody else that would help me out um, as to uh, how we can achieve what the board up there is, I believe, wanting to achieve without being... The words up there would just put us in a space that I think we would struggle to achieve that recommendation without doing a large body of work within possibly some future long-term plan consultation. It would be very useful, councillors, if there is to be a foreshadowed motion on the table that we have it ahead of the vote. I to think because that may now. well determine how people vote on this item. So, for instance, what I'm saying is that people may vote against this in the knowledge that there is a foreshadowed. Um, I'm stretching my boundaries as a chair here, Councillor. It's not for me to determine that. Any other speakers to the motion? Oh, Councillor Gordon. Oh, I'm going to speak against are you asking if speakers for speakers against? Yes, correct. Oh, no, I'm not speaking against. Uh, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with the recommendation as it stands. It's very open-ended, and so moving with urgency could mean that sometime after January, the council calls a meeting with the community and says, "Look, this is where we're at." It could be as little as that. And the same with reconsideration of prioritization. Prioritization could say, look, we, we've had a, a quick look at it and it will fit or it won't fit. This is really about getting a process going. It's, it's, it's a signal, it's a request to think about it in terms of, you know, in the LTP, we had a fairly structured very structured process that effectively the Martin Civic Centre build was going to happen in the next X number of years and then following that tie happy would 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 its process would happen. And so I, I guess to, you know having to close the building has put the cat among the pigeons a little bit. And so Ty Happy is saying, well actually you know, what's going to happen here? So that's what that's really what this request is about. And I, it, it's not compelling us to really do anything apart from having a look at the solution and considering a reprioritization. And if we say, look, we've had a look at both and the answer's no, then that's where it lies. That's where it ends. Councillor Dalgetty. Uh, Councillor Gordon, thank you for your words. I just, your wording, a quick look around this big decision, I feel. Um, is not not a, not a good way to go with such a big decision. Um, I believe staff need the time to to give us adequate information around this. It, it, this is, um, for me, a big decision. Because, partly because the Martin situation, to me, is very urgent as well. 
So we've had three speakers against, any speakers for. Um, what I will, I'll foreshadow a motion that if this, sorry. I'm sorry, that, that was a speaker for. We've only had one against. Sorry. Um, two against the mover. Mover and second mover, Councillor Gordon, Councillor Wilson. Four, two, four, one against. Oh, yes, sorry, we yeah, had it run the wrong way. <laughs> Councillor Duncan, sorry. I'd like to speak against it, thank you. Um, um, this has been such a huge shock for the type of community, and basically, uh, this civ civic centre, which is the civic heart of the town, it has been chopped off its, at its knees, and I think this has um, the feedback that I am receiving from our community is that they're reeling and um, the staff is terribly upset, and as is the community. Uh, it's going to, there's no way that facility can be replaced anywhere else within the town together. It will have to be chopped up um, and it is urgent for our people to have that centre um, in those facilities. So uh, I really think that this does give enough leeway for staff. Um, and it also sends a message to our community board that we respect their, their, um, their place in the community to speak for them. And um, uh, when, yeah, Taihapi really needs needs those facilities brought back as soon as possible, and so urgency is is um, required. And certainly, looking at the reprioritisation. Um, Councillor, it's a question, and it's in relation to uh, providing the services that have been provided out of that facility. Uh, what is the time frame around providing another uh, venue to still be able to deliver those services to, to IP Town Ship? So just as a community. question really around urgency that yes. I'll get the Chief Executive to respond to. Is that the reason I'm yes. your yes. question? Um, I, I can answer it two ways, uh, if I can, Councillor. Firstly, we anticipate having an alternative location in Taihapi operating by the 22nd of December. It won't, it'll be uh, as best we can, it'll be as services. I, I think if I might could add to that, would, would, uh, you're, you're okay, Your Worship? So as long as you're not arguing for the No, no, absolutely not. If I'm to enact this, um, then I would need to understand how urgent, because um, almost everything we have on our plate is urgent, um, whether it be Three Waters reform or RMA reform or you know, a, a number of things. Um, and so having having that kind of guidance from you as governors will help us prioritise and I can then be able to advise you of the consequence. Um, so if you say this is urgent and very urgent, then I can stop other things um, or employ more staff or do whatever, but then I have to go, I don't know the consequence of this, I, I haven't had time to digest that. I'm sorry. We're dealing with questions here. You've already spoken, Councillor Hira. Oh, I, I haven't got a question. You, you can speak to it, certainly. Um, well, what I wanted to do was speak speak against the motion and to support um, what Councillor Gordon has had put up. Because um, I don't see that there's uh, uh, just so just taking into consideration what you've just said, um, Peter, about everything's urgent. I don't think you can get much urgent than uh, a building having to be closed. I don't know what's more urgent than that um, of people's lives are potentially being in danger. Hence the reason that, that that's closed. And I don't I don't feel that that's um, asking. To, uh, um, Asking to progress the solution doesn't, it doesn't seem to be, it is open ended. It's not something that you, we're saying that you're saying that at this date we want that to happen. It's being able to just put the coke up on, on the table. And also, the other thing is a reconsideration. You, you can always go back to it. So, you know, I'll be speaking against the motion currently on the table. Well, 
we've had three speakers for, I think. Um, two against, we've got it around the right way this time. Are we allowed to ask a question after that? Certainly. And we'll have a final question. If I may. Um, given the Chief Executive's reply, could he paint some sort of a picture in terms of the ex your expected timeline, given that this has happened only a few days ago? What would you see as the process going forward if, if this recommendation wasn't on the table? Um, the first thing what we've done, or we will do from here, other than relocate, is to determine the safety of the perimeter of the building, so that's the footpath and bus stop, etc. Um, from there, it's to look at um, a, a range of options that elected members may consider that was um, um, included in the LTP decisions and when that might occur. Um, there's been, there will be some assessments being done on the building. Um, what we are aware of is um, one of the biggest challenges is the way in which the building is, for want of a better term, forgive the non-engineering speak, but attached to the ground. Uh, and uh, understand all those um, and then and, and, and bring that back um, to you. Now, th that's something that is in the work now in the work program. If you ask me to expedite that, then something else will drop off, or something else will, will be pushed back. When you say it's in the work program, is this February, April, this time next year? Um, big picture. How do you think? We have asked our structural engineers to prepare a concept design for the strengthening of this so that we can have a cost estimate prepared. And they've indicated that that would be ready in March. And we've also asked them for a brief and a cost to do a geotechnical desktop assessment followed by an investigation. Um, and we're likely to have the desktop report in March as well. Thank you. I'm going to have to get to the position of taking a vote very shortly, councillors. Councillor Bill. Just a further question. So in the Chief Executive's reply, you're suggesting that there will be options put back in front of council and potentially one of those is the reprioritising of Taihepi. Is that correct? So where that you said where that fits within the work programme, so that may be shifting up the ladder. Is that what you were suggesting? Um, I, I, I don't know necessarily that that will be a recommendation yet until we have the work done. You may come and ask that of, of start of me, um, try to see what it would like. But I, I, I'm not sure that would necessarily, I, I would like in answering the question without giving a, a heck of a lot of um, background, I would rather give you a presentation on how, how we can get that building up to scratch again. And, and what the impact and consequence will be, and for then you to, do, to recommend what you'd like me to do in terms of prioritisation against other projects. I well, know reprioritisation does not necessarily mean that things can't happen at this conjuncture. So it means essentially. So I'm going to go back. Councillor Carty hadn't spoken, then I'll go back to a right of reply. The clarification, so there is work in progress at the moment, investigating the situation as to fix it without this um, going through. Correct. Thank you. Go back to a right of reply. Thank you, Your Worship. Clearly by the number of... Um, questions that are being raised and the number of somewhat vague answers that have been given because we don't know what we don't know and this only landed on the council table a little over a week ago we had uh, i think 24 hours to make a call which rightly so the chief executive made we then had to engage with staff which was absolutely the right uh, right approach um, it did come as a shock uh, there's a degree of emotion in this uh, in this recommendation but i do not see how we can vote in favour, uh, sorry, uh, uh, against the motion that I've put up, we simply do not have this level of detail. 
we're all asking questions of the chief executive as to where this may sit, where it isn't. To be fair to the chief executive, he can't put his hand on his heart and say he has those answers now. This, this, this matter is only a week old. Um, we're still just trying to deal with the fallout from it. Hence my uh, recommendation that we do not approve the wording of this recommendation as put by the community board. Absolute respect to the community board, and I hope Michelle and the team are watching online, understand where the recommendation has come from. But the wording and the way it is put does not service us with any outcomes that they are looking for. So I urge you to vote in favour of the motion as it reads up there that we do not approve recommendation for. Thank you. I now must put the motion. Those in favour? Motion is carried. Thank you. Um, would the staff be comfortable um, that this item not be carried over because it's been lost, but that a report be prepared around options for us by, say, February or more March? Um, I'll respond to that. What Jess has outlined is when, so we have instigated some work, the anticipated receipt of that is, is, is March. Um, there will be time for staff to would need to diagnose it, etc. write a report. That report has to be with you a week before. I absolutely can't, I can say it will not happen in March. Um, at best it will be April, likely with May. Okay, well, I'll probably leave it there. Um, we can only really deal with the recommendations that are here on the table. If I may add, Your Worship, um, there's been information that we've shared in this meeting that wasn't available to the Taihapi Community Board, and I think had they known that we that Jess has got work underway, that may have led to a different. I know that, um, but um, and I think it's right for us to go back to the Community Board to outline some of the reasons behind this, and I can do that directly with Anne. Okay. Thank you very much. Your Worship, I may. I think that what the Chief Executive just said is completely appropriate. Mm -hmm. I think had we had the knowledge that we're, you know, in engineering investigations were underway currently, this would have never arrived in the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else I have to do other than move on to? Would somebody like to move, please, that we move into committee? Councillor Belsham for the reasons going, uh, Councillor Lambert for seconding. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried. For those online, thank you very much for your time. Um, and we'll take a five minute break. <laughs>